Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at the new Origin Blade Maker Bevel Grinding Guide or Bevel Grinding Jig. Do a product review on it and show you how to use the jigs. Now these jigs come in two different sizes, basically large and small. I'm going to be using the small one today, uh, which will really do all of the knives that I usually grind, uh, small and medium sized knives. Now these jigs are solid. They're very, very well built. Two very strong handles, knurled, a very unique angle adjustment with a turnbuckle and a lockdown screw. They have a variety of different uh, tapped holes that can be used as uh, stops as well as securing um, screws for the blank onto the, onto the guide. Overall, just a, a very well constructed a 90 degree bevel grinding jig. So here we're going to take a look at the jig itself. This was the small one. Look at the abundance of tapped holes on that surface plate. You can use all of those to mount your blanks as well as create stops so that those blanks can be mounted exactly the same in both directions. It slides or glides easily on ABS plastic that can be replaced if it gets worn out. And it has a very unique uh, lockdown device and angle adjustment. The angle adjustment is done with a turnbuckle. So you can just turn that with your fingers, set the angle exactly where you want it, and then just lock that angle you know, into position. Now before I get into actually using uh, the, the grinding jig, I want to emphasize the importance of creating scribed lines on the edge of the blank called railroad tracks. These are going to be your visual guide or visual reference when grinding the uh, bevels. I'm do actually doing this with another Origin Blade Maker product. Uh, this is just their, their line scribe. And you'll see once I mount this blank onto the bevel grinding jig that you can easily see those scribe lines and you can use those as your visual guide uh, so that you end up with bevels that are even on both sides and are very consistent. So here the, the knife is mounted. I used one of the holes right through the quarter inch pinhole on the blank and I used another one of the, uh, the screws as a stop so that it, it holds that blade basically parallel with the surface. Those are the uh, you know, the scribed lines, the railroad track lines. Now, I, I'm using an Origin Blade Maker 2x72 with a 2 horsepower variable speed. I've got my 90 degree work uh, surface set up that this guide is going to slide along. I'm not using a lot of force to push this uh, blank into, into the belt. I'm using a coarse grit belt. This is a 60 grit belt. And the rationale for that is I really want to remove as much material as, as possible uh, quickly and with creating the least amount of heat as possible. So finer grit belts will create heat faster. Um, the 60 seems to be the, the best. You know, if I go to a 36, I end up leaving really deep groove uh, drawing lines that, that are a little bit hard to get out. When using the jig, you want to have the blank flat to the belt or you want to have the tip of the knife pulled away a little bit from the belt. These are just general guidelines. You don't really want to have the blank angled into the belt as shown here. Now we're going to do two blanks uh, on this video. I just want to show you a, a few different a, t a few different things about grinding with these beveled jigs. So as I'm pulling this blank across I'm keeping an eye on those scribed lines. And very quickly, you start to create a really nice bevel. You can see here the plunge line. So I've got the belt basically level or even with the right side of the flat platen of the grinder. What I found was the small jig actually fits right into my quench bucket, the entire assembly. And you really want to quench every, you know, one or two passes. Just another view. 
right back into that plunge line. And you can see that I've got the tip angled away from the belt just a little bit. I'm just doing the rough grinding of bringing that bevel into those grind lines. I can spend a little bit more time towards the tip and I can angle uh, the entire assembly away on my right side or kind of pull it away in order to get at that tip of the knife. You'll see that on the, on the second grind, on the second knife. So after I'm done with the uh, 60 grit belt, I went right to a 120. I, I skipped over the 80 grit. And I was pretty pleasantly surprised. It only took one or two passes with the 120 uh, to clean up those 60 grit lines. So I'm just going to set up that belt so that it's even uh, with the right side of the flat platen. I'm going to bring my, my 90 degree work rest uh, into position. You can see the blank is, is mounted. And it's just a matter of lining up that plunge line. And again, I'm not I'm not going to use a lot of force here. I'm going to let the um, grinder and the grit on the belt do the work. Now these are all rough grinds at this point. These are all rough pre-heat treating grinds. I don't really have to be this careful with these heat treat, you know, rough grinds, but it's good. It's a good time to practice and really end up with a beautiful bevel. So now the trick is to just mirror image and mount this blank exactly how you mounted it in one direction in the other direction. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move those pins to the corresponding holes in the opposite direction and just remount it. Now when I do these product reviews, and I've done them on a variety of different products, I always like to, to tell you the pros and the cons. Um, really the only con that I could find on this particular jig uh, was that for these uh, pins, they used two different size um, Allen keys. And that, that's it, it's not, not, a, not a big deal. Um, that was the only thing I would, I would change if possible would, would be to have the same size uh, Allen, Allen key for all the screws. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna bevel the second side of the blank. So you want to keep an eye not only on grinding the bevel, but also on your starting point or the plunge line. You really want that to end up matching up so that you have nice, even plunge lines. And that is very easy to do on this, on this jig. You can visualize the starting point of those plunge lines. If you've got the blank mounted identical in both directions, if your starting point's the same, your plunge is going, uh, is going to end up being the same. And you can control the width of the bevel uh, just by changing the angle on that guide. So these are, are again rough bevels, but you see that I've lined up uh, both of those plunge lines pretty, pretty nicely. On the finished bevels, you want to be you know, real dead on with those so that the end result is going to be perfectly even bevels, uh, bevel plunge lines. So now I'm going to show you the second knife. This is a, a slightly different style knife, same size range, a little bit bigger, but I couldn't find any of the pre-tapped, drilled and tapped holes that lined up perfectly for the stop. So I used a very convenient cap screw that is mounted on a, on a, a slide. And I slid that right up into position. I, I positioned the knife blank where I wanted it, then slid the cap screw up into position and locked it down. So that cap screw will be the stop for this particular mount. Again, I went to the turnbuckle angle adjustment. And what I found out really nice about this is you can work on a variety of different knives. And as long as you write down what angle you use for each particular blank, after heat treating, it's very easy to reset that knife back up to the same angle and the same mounts uh, and do your post heat treating cleanup. In this case, I set the angle at about seven and locked it into position. A 
I'm back to the 60 grit belt. This is going to be the first bevel on this blank. A lot of my knives, I'll end up using a little hand file and creating a coil hole as the bevel uh, starting point. When using this type of a jig, I would do that after the bevel is done. Because that way I can visualize the starting point of that plunge line. And notice I'm, I'm quenching the entire assembly, in, you know, every one or two passes. It's more important as you get to the finer grit belts. You know, if you're at the 120 grit belt, you probably want to quench it every pass. With the 60 grit, you could probably get away with two or three passes before you quench. Now notice I'm pulling away the handle in order to get at that tip of the knife. It will become second nature. So instead of just grinding straight across, I kind of pull my left hand in so that the handle goes away or arcs away. And that allows you to, to grind evenly to described grind lines at the tip of the blade. I'm gonna flip this knife over. And then I just wanna show you those uh, plunge lines again. So here on the left hand side, you'll see the existing plunge line. You can see the scribe lines on the, on the edge of the blank. And now you can see I'm starting to create the plunge line on the second side. So I started a little bit away, because you, you, know, you can't add material, you almost want to subtract material. And then I'll work my way in until both of those plunge lines are perfectly even. Now, you have to forgive me, I adjusted the light on my grinder and I, I took away some of the light from this video, but you can still see. So now the punch line is a little bit closer and I'm grinding right along that scribed line. This is only the second knife that I've done with this particular jig and already I'm moving at a much faster rate. It just really becomes second nature as you, as you use it a couple of times. And I'm arcing away as I get towards the tip. So the plunge lines are even. I'm gliding evenly or keeping that jig flat against the, the work rest. And I arc away towards the tip. It really is as simple as that. and you end up with beautiful bevels. I would highly recommend these bevel grinding uh, guides, or as I call them, bevel grinding jigs uh, from Origin Blade Maker. Uh, you can check them out on their website. I'll put a link uh, right on this video. Now the pros, there's a lot of mounting points, a lot of tapped holes. It it's very, has very solid construction, solid aluminum. It slides easily on ABS plastic. Uh, the angle adjustment with the turnbuckle is just awesome. And here you see the, the finished product. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'd love to hear a comment if you, if you leave a comment in the comment section. I'd love to invite you to our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. By all means, uh, check out some of my blades on bergknifemaking.com. Uh, and if you have a chance, check out the uh, how-to book that Jason Northgard and I put out last year called Introduction to Knife Making, and that can be found on amazon.com. Thank you very much.